Good morning, I'm Morgan Donner, and today I'm going to show you how I make this tunic, which, as you might be able to guess, is a little bit big on me, and therefore not meant for me. My husband asked if he could have me make a new tunic for this upcoming summer's camping season, and I figured that you guys might also enjoy seeing how I go about making a really quick medieval-style tunic. This is just an undershirt, as you might have guessed. They would have worn various colored tunics and later on doublets over top, but it seems to be pretty common all throughout Europe that some sort of white-ish linen garment was worn underneath. You can just call it a shirt for right now because that makes it easy. This isn't going to be a very fancy tutorial or anything super exciting. If you have sewn more than maybe a couple garments for yourself, I'm probably not going to be teaching you anything new in this video. But if you've never sewn anything at all, then hopefully this will show you how relatively simple it can be. I'm trying to go for something relatively beginner level here. In fact, to try and make it as sort of beginner friendly and as accessible as possible for people, assuming you have access to a sewing machine, this should be easily done within a couple hours. It's a super fast project and is a good starter project since if your shirt isn't maybe the best thing you've ever sewn, it's cool because it's underneath all the rest of your clothing. So it's a, it's a really good one to start out first. Jumping right on in, I have my pre-washed and ironed linen folded in half. A good tip for starting out a shirt if you don't have a measuring tape, or in my case, if the person that you're making a shirt for isn't home, you can use a shirt of theirs to get their approximate size. It's important that you go with a non-stretch fabric, so no shirts, no sweaters. With the shirt laid flat on the fabric here, I can mark out the width of the torso, or be bold and just go ahead and start cutting it. I'm adding a lot of extra ease here since I can always make it smaller if I need to, but it's a little bit harder to make it bigger. I'll set aside the torso fabric for now and use the other piece of fabric I cut off to make the sleeves. Matching up the fold of the fabric and the sleeve, I cut the fabric around the sleeve generously. Maybe a little too generously, <laughs> these sleeves ended up being really large in the end. To continue the angle of the seam, I'm flipping the triangle cutoffs and using them to finish the missing corner of the sleeve. This is not actually all that different from some of the extant shirts from medieval all the way through to 16th century, so it's kind of cool and totally a thing. I considered going with the much more common square gusset under the arm, but I wanted to show a shirt that is truly easy to make 100% by machine sewing. Speaking of which, let me introduce you to the star of the show today, the French seam. French seams are a great way to have completely finished seams inside a garment with little to no hand sewing needed. It's pretty far from the most period option for medieval clothing, but it is certainly very easy to machine sew, which is the goal for today. For a quick visual reference, here we have the right side of our fabric, and normally when you sew something together, you would put the right sides of the fabric together, then sew along right here, and when you open that back up, you would end up with a seam and all the raw edges on the inside, right? For a French seam, you sort of do the opposite. We're going to put the wrong sides together and then sew this up. Now the raw edge of the fabric is on the front of the garment, and I did a fairly narrow seam allowance here. Next we flip it so that the right sides are together, iron the seam flat, and then sew it again. The right side looks good now, no more raw edges. The inside of this example has the nicely encased fabric edge. The only trick to this is that you need to sew the first seam with a very narrow seam allowance, and then when you sew the second seam, it needs to be bigger so that all of the edge is caught inside. If I cut this in half, you can kind of see here that the first seam allowance is completely inside the little tube here, and that is a French seam. Applying that demonstration, I'll sew the triangle piece onto the bigger sleeve piece, wrong side against wrong side. Not that it really matters with this particular fabric since they're exactly the same on both sides. Then we'll iron the tiny seam allowance, flip it so that the right sides are together, and then sew the second line of the front seam. With all of that done, we can cut off the excess bit here on the sleeve. Now we'll attach the body and the sleeve pieces together with the exact same procedure. Line up the center of the sleeve and the center of the body, which is effectively going to be the shoulder when it's done. Now that you have a seam on the sleeve, though, there is truly a wrong and a right side, so be extra careful about sewing wrong side touching wrong side here. With the sleeves attached, 
we should work on the neckline while it's still possible to lay the whole garment down flat. I've ironed the exact center of the tunic while it was folded, so I know where to place the neck. Never put the neck hole in the exact center. You want to shift it down so that it's about a quarter on the back and three quarters towards the front. If you look at any of your modern day t-shirts, you'll notice that the neckline is always more towards the front of the shirt than it is on the back. I kind of gambled on the head size, hoping that his head isn't too much bigger than my own. 22 inches or 56 centimeters is what I ended up going with if you're curious. After marking the seam allowance, I added the facing fabric on top and then pinned it in place. Sewing around the circle and then cutting it out, we have a neckline. Since this is a concave seam allowance and it's going to be flipped outwards, I clipped the edges every inch or so. Then I flipped the facing in towards the inside of the shirt, which takes a little bit of convincing and ironing to stay put. I don't want a square facing, so I'll go ahead and cut the excess fabric here until I have a nice narrow band that I can then turn into a nice narrow neck facing. You can hand sew this down with some whip stitches, or if you truly want to stick to the machine, you can top stitch it down instead. Comparing them side by side though, the sewing is visible with both methods, but a little more subtle on the hand sewn side, so I think I'll go ahead and finish the neck off with that. If you like the machine side better though, that's totally fine. When the neck is done, we can sew the side seam, making sure again to put the wrong sides of the fabric together for the first seam. Sew, iron, sew again, iron again. <laughs> when using French seams as your finishing method, you may occasionally end up with a few little threads sticking out of the completed seam. It's not a big deal, just go ahead and cut those off. Hopefully you won't have too many of them. The bottom hem of the shirt is a simple double fold. Ironing it down before you sew helps kind of keep things in place and just it sews so much more nicely. This is top stitching that will definitely be visible on the outside of the shirt. That's okay. It's, you know, at the hem of your shirt. No one looks at that. We are at the very last seam. The cuff of the shirt gets the top stitch treatment just like the hem and then we're all done. This is a really nice and simple shirt, which makes an excellent first project for any reenactor. And it's an absolute staple to your wardrobe, so you kind of need to make one anyway. It's far too big on me, but it still holds a certain uh, nightshirt charm. I hope you enjoyed watching how I went about making this tunic. And if you did, you should let me know what other things you might enjoy seeing me make. I also hope that you'll enjoy the rest of this particular series, since I'm not only making a tunic for him, I'm making a whole outfit. An over tunic, some hose, what else? Maybe a hat. Oh, I'm going to make a fancy hood, which is very interesting and exciting. So hopefully that'll be all really fun and interesting to you guys too. <laughs>